Hey y'all, it's Amber. Welcome to my channel. Whether you're a first time visitor, returning viewer, subscriber, welcome, welcome. I'm happy to have you. It is about a couple of days before I go into school. So I'm gonna do this first video vlog style. Well, they'll probably all be vlog style as I said in my classroom. But it is a couple of days before I go into my class. So I'm gonna make sure that I start getting things set up, getting things prepared, ready to go. So that as I begin moving into my classroom on Thursday and Friday, I have everything ready, everything set and everything good to go. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you click the notification bell so that you can be aware of every time that I make a post. Still rusty, I'm working on it. <laughs> and with that being said, we are going to go ahead and start prepping. So I'm gonna insert some footage of me getting my books together. I had a video request of showing people how I'm going to set up my classroom library and how I keep things organized. Typically, I keep things color-coded and labeled by genre. This year, I'm, I'm physically going to organize the books by genre. I have specific labels on them, which I'll be able to show you in just a second. And I'm laminating and wrapping my books. I got that idea from a YouTuber, Alexis Gomez. I'll make sure to link that video down below and she explains how she does it as well since I pretty much did mine as a time lapse. And uh, once I get into the classroom and get my two bookshelves and begin setting things up because I am going to have to request a second bookshelf, then I will um, show you how I get that taken care of and show you how I get that done because I'm definitely going to need both bookshelves and probably a rug too for my little library area. So with that being said, um, I am about to keep working on the books. I'm going to keep laminating the books. I just woke up from this beautiful nap. So I'm in the mood to get some more um, book work done. I'm going to move this empty bin to my closet so that I can just have less to look at. I need to build my 10 drawer card. I need to label the drawers and I need to get my supplies from downstairs and begin refilling the drawers because I do want to have those done. And I think these are going to be some of the first things that I take with me besides books to my campus when I go on Thursday and Friday. So there's just quite a few things that I want to get done that wasn't going to be included in my previous vlog videos, or maybe this is all going to be included in my vlog videos. I don't know. I have to see um, what the timing of things are, but I also have some PD that I should be watching that I started watching earlier before I went to sleep. I need to update my planner. I need to get some things done for my birthday prep for next week. Your girl is turning 28 next week. <laughs> Ew. So um, I'm going out of town with my boyfriend and then he also invited me on a trip to Mexico. <laughs> so I'm also going to do some... Um, planning for that and get that taken care of i don't know the exact dates just yet but when i do i'll go from there i'm excited <laughs> um so i just wanted to check in with y'all let y'all know what's going on i still need to lesson plan there's still a lot of things that i want to get done um before school actually begins in three weeks seems like a lot of doing a little amount of time but it's okay everything's going to work itself out so just wanted to check in with y'all. I think I'm about to start editing a video so that I can get something posted for tomorrow. And I will see y'all later. Okay, so I just labeled or relabeled my drawer bins. I'm not on my hands when I did it. Let me stop. <laughs> so I just relabeled my drawer bins, as we can see, and I wiped them out with some everyday cleaner and got all of the dust and cobwebs out of there because it was pretty dusty. And considering I have allergies, that's probably not the best for me to have such dusty drawers. So I have those relabeled. I have two drawers without a label. So I will make sure to print some of those labels tonight, get those laminated and put up here. But I'm about to switch tasks and start working on some of my books just so I can get more and more done. My goal is going to have all of my books finished being labeled and laminated so that I can take them with me to school on Thursday, um, along with my 10 drawer card system. So obviously there's no 
no paperwork for me to add here because I haven't started actually teaching my unit or my lessons just yet. Uh, but I am going to start adding some resources to my remediation drawer. I think I'm going to make this one extension work and this one some additional ELA resources, anchor charts, um, things that they can keep in their ELA folder because I am going to require that all of my students have folders. And because that is a requirement, I'm not sure if it's going to be added to their school supply list. So I will make sure to provide their folders for them so that I can ensure that they have it. So I'm going to start. Um, I have some folders from last year and I'll be happy to walk y'all through that you know what's in these folders where I got the resources and information from so I'm gonna do the similar thing with my students this year and put their folders together but it's obviously going to be a little bit different because I'm going from teaching eighth grade to tenth grade and obviously I'm getting them ready for um, rhetoric analysis I'm getting them ready for argumentative essays um, additionally they're going to be doing analysis essays and so there are different things and information that I need them to have access to. They're also preparing for SAT and um, ACT tests. My school district doesn't really promote ACT, but I took both. And um, getting them prepared for their STAR ELC. So just a lot of information, more information for these students than I had for my eighth graders. And so that's information that I'm going to want to keep in their folders. And I want to create my own folder first just so I can have a benchmark of what I want their folders to look like and what information is going to be added and when. So that's what that drawer is going to be for. And then, like I said, this one is going to be for extension work. But for now, I just have my little task card bin. In which case, I need to figure out what they can be used for because I don't exactly know just yet. So, like I said, I'm about to go ahead and start working on my books um, until I get tired, then I'm going to review again this poem that I need for the AP Institute that I'm going to be in tomorrow. Probably look at some more um, sessions from the ELA Success Summit, talk to my man, and give me some rest. Because <laughs> I have quite the week ahead of me, quite the next couple of weeks ahead of me. But my birthday is next week, so I'm excited. <sighs> Almost 28, so I have that to look forward to. I'm going to... Um, San Marcus with my boyfriend uh, for my birthday and I'm probably going to celebrate with my mom and niece obviously beforehand. I think I'm going to celebrate with my niece this upcoming weekend. I want to take her to this interactive selfie museum. Um, so my boyfriend and I are going to take her on a date because she often wants to come on our dates with us. Um, we've allowed her once or twice, but not all the time. So I think we're going to allow us to come, allow her to come on this date with us to the selfie museum. She'll love it. And then, um, we'll probably go out to eat with my mom next Thursday, August 4th, which is the day before my birthday, because we're going to work. And then, um, my boyfriend and I are going to be heading straight out of town from school and we'll probably get some dinner. And um, we're for sure going to the San Marcos outlets because I want to do some shopping. <laughs> so that is the plan for this evening. It's just pretty much going to be a bunch of time lapsing and I don't want to bore y'all. Um, I know my patients can only do time lapsing for so long. So I think I'm going to call it a night um, for, with the vlog for this evening. I'm going to go get myself together, get myself ready for bed, wash my face, clean myself up. And, um, but I'm gonna keep going with these books until I have no more energy left. So I will check in with y'all later. Bye. Hey y'all, welcome back to another day. Um, welcome to my channel. If you're first time visitor, returning viewer, subscriber, welcome, welcome. I'm happy to have you. That little spiel. Um, so I am still processing what I've just heard and started learning in this AP Institute. I'm very... <sighs> He talked at us for quite a bit. We had a little discussion, but I think I'm just, I started tapping out towards the end. So what we're doing now, we have some asynchronous time and we're supposed to be looking at specific units and determining, you know, how our class structure and our lesson plans are aligned to the structure of the AP standards. I'm not actually going to be teaching an AP course. I am teaching, um, English too, uh, but they want us to structure it as a pre-AP course, which is why I'm in this training in the first place. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you click the notification bell so that YouTube can notify you every single time that I make a post. And with that being said, 
back to the task at hand. So I have some asynchronous work time and I'm supposed to be reviewing um, specific units. But like I said, we, <laughs> I am still processing the information that was just thrown my way. And I'm trying to figure out how I can best align my class to uh, the structure of the AP literature class, which is what some of my students are going to be taking next year and the rest of them will be taking um, rhetoric. So <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how I can find a balance between the two and how I can still keep my class true and authentic to our curriculum that has already been written, but still have the flexibility. Okay, but still get the flexibility of getting my students prepared for their start ELC because the way I see it, if they can be prepared for an AP course, then a start ELC should be easier for them, in my opinion. I'm uh, currently looking at the data from the star, result, star results from this previous past year and just trying to figure out where my school falls on the list for the course yeah we got some work to do so i'm gonna also think about that as far as remediation how i can best get kids prepared for star ap sats all of those things in this one course so like no pressure but like pressure and then i also want to be able to perform well in the district so for our english 2 team we are both experienced teachers so my new co-planner um or co-teacher whatever y'all call it in your state district wherever you may be uh, we both came in teaching at the same time i actually started teaching a year before him but as far as cohorts for our campus goes we both came in at the same time same year and um, he has taught an AP course before. He taught 12th grade. I am coming from middle school, so I've only taught eighth grade. And fortunately, the curriculum between eighth grade to English to 10th grade is not tremendously different. There are only like a couple of standards that are different and the standards are pretty much spiraled from year to year. I appreciate vertical alignment. So that's information that I can build off of. However, I haven't looked at the ninth grade standards to see what the differences between eighth and ninth grade is and what the differences are between ninth and 10th grade because there have been some gaps. Um, for students from their eighth grade year to their 12th grade year. And so part of my role and my responsibility, as well as my co-planners, is 10th grade is a very critical and important year. They're going to be taking PSAT. This is going to be their last English EOC. Um, and they have to pass it in order for them to graduate. And I don't want students to have to worry about this. They're junior and senior year because there's already a lot of additional pressures that's being put on them during those years and those times so we just have to play catch up i'm looking at some of my students data it looks like they've given me a lot of not necessarily high performing students but students that are on grade level for the most part they were on ninth grade level when they took their test last year i believe i have maybe about 15 students that did not pass um and of those 15 students seven of them are sped so i don't know who the new sped teacher is going to be for those students but i am going to what is on my lip i'm sorry y'all so it's a lot that i'm having to process it's a lot that i'm having to review for this ap course in comparison to my my English course, I still haven't finished going through my unit plan with the fine tooth comb and they've updated it since I've last printed it. But I've been going off of the one that I had because I've annotated it. So what I think I'm going to go ahead and do is just download the updated copy. Go ahead and type in my notes that I have for this paper and start planning with the updated unit plan because it doesn't make sense for me to keep planning with an outdated unit plan and i also need to figure out how i'm going to structure my small group because we are starting one day one <laughs> so with that being said i'm done talking i've been talking for 12 minutes now i need to go warm myself up something to eat um and get my mind ready because boyfriend and i are debriefing he is also in an ap institute he is in ap institute for espanol he is going to be teaching ap spanish 
I don't know if it's literature or language. I want to say it's language, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, so that's what he's doing, and I'm AP lit. I'll see y'all later. <laughs>